Our commentators Peter Mushendu and Gerard Bictok are still with us in the studio city. Yes, please. The proverb. <clears throat> Indeed. This is uh, from the country of Namibia. Yes. Envy and greed grow from the same stock. Envy and greed grow from the same stock. Yes. They're on the same WhatsApp group. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> same WhatsApp. <laughs> nice of you to 2023 it up. <laughs> yes, <sir>. Very good. <laughs> Gentlemen and lady, let's, as we talk about, okay, what we've been seeing, you know, the rallies and all, let's also talk about the state of the nation in terms of this. The cost of living is rising. The, what you're saying, Peter, that, you know, people who are going to Jakaranda yesterday, are people who are looking for hope because there's something that's not working. There's something that should have been working that's not working. There is an expectation of government that is not being realized and being delivered. The government itself is you know, making promises one after another on what it's going to do on the cost of living. Or well, we are distributing fertilizer, subsidized rates for fertilizer, so that farmers can grow the food, so that the food will come to the market cheaper. However, at the same time, we must realize that we must, you know, tighten our belts and prepare ourselves. The CS for the National Treasury has said this year is going to be worse than last year. The drought situation is continuing. Food is getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. The government is requesting us through our elected representatives in parliament to spend 400 billion shillings more in the next financial year than it has spent in the last financial year governors are asking to be given 400 billion shillings to go to all the counties in the next financial year the government is saying <laughs> so we can only give you up to 370 billion shillings. 400 billion no 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 but the national government is ready and willing to spend an extra 400 billion shillings money that we don't have eh? yeah, money that we don't have <laughs> with all those things that are happening do you get a sense that the political leaders be they kenya kwanza be they asimio are actually in tune with what's affecting kenyans well i, I would say something that um this government must look into very seriously mm -hmm. if we must make inloads with the common mwananchi we must talk about our tax regime because uh, uh tax alone cannot develop a nation mm -hmm. by taxing our people and i once said because gerard be talking in another life he's also a political show host eh? mm -hmm. i have said in his show and i will repeat here again that for this country to develop we must restructure how we seek funding from uh, financial institutions all over the world. Mm. And uh, when you have an institution like IMF coming back to the country, it is telling you that there is a problem with how we manage public agencies and public institutions. Mm. Because for IMF to actually give you a loan, they always give you those loans based on uh, conditions that you must restructure this or restructure that. And I've always insisted, one of the countries in the world that has the greatest external debt is Japan. Mm. But they don't feel the pinch because every coin that they have borrowed, they have put it into good use. They have uh, been able to revolutionize manufacturing of motor vehicles in Japan. And therefore, they can continue taking external grants because they are able to manage what they get. And one of the biggest problems we have in this country, it is when we take loans out there, meant to come and build road A to Z, and then we realize that Eric Klatif, who is a minister for mining, has a new project and we will divert that money to go and uh, do that project. Mm. And I think for me, if this country is going to be reconstructed and we are going to build the economy, we will not do it by exaggerating or putting a lot of uh, uh, taxes on Kenyans. Because one, you need to widen the tax net for you to be able to get enough tax, as you're saying. How do you widen the tax net? 
I keep insisting that uh, before you tax Kenyans and ask yourself why we do not have uh, so many investors bringing money into this country, because that is one of the other ways that we are going to expand this economy by making it easy for, eco for investors to come to this country. Today, mm. look at our power, uh, Nini, look at our power system, how we adjudicate on matters of uh, power f meant for production. We are using something called Seagull Grids. It is the reason why if electricity, one substation goes down, the entire half of Nairobi goes for 17 hours without electricity. Mm -hmm. We must introduce something in electrical engineering. That's why my field is called macro grids. That you can be able to produce the energy, solar energy, in Deya, where I come from, and part of Kikuyu constituency, and provide them with their own grid that if something happens to uh, Lokichogi or, or Lokicha power station, it is not going to affect production. Mm. So, w the government, before bringing these tax regimes, and these are the things that are pushing people to go to Dakaranda, mm. because imagine this guy already doesn't have food on his table. And he has been asked that he has to pay more tax. That means he is going, anything that he is going to earn to be able to buy that ugari, he will first of all have to pay tax on it. Then it is not enough to feed the children. So the government must go back to the drawing board, mm. ask ourselves, how do we widen the tax net? Mm. Because it is like governors, what they are doing in this country. They, like I have seen yesterday people of the Ndegwa here in Kiambu, that the rad rate has been moved from 350 shillings to 36,000. Imagine that, Ndu, in the Ndegu. From the Ndegu. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nobody from the Ndegu are here. But, but, but those are the sad realities we are talking about. Mm. That government must, yes, we must pay tax. But that is, that is the canon responsibility of any responsible Kenyan. Yeah. You must pay tax. Because it also makes no sense. That we have, I think, is it for about 14 million registered taxpayers? Mm. But uh, more than half of that number always files re zero returns. So, mm. Peter, I hear you saying clearly yes. that there is a problem. There is a problem. There was a promise that was made to Kenyans, even yes. if it was not. The responsibility of government, yes. the responsibility of government is to create a conducive environment in which yes. we, people can live. So, we've agreed here that there's a problem. We could have months and months of conversation about what a responsible government ought to do. I personally believe that there needs to be a direct route towards manufacturing until you start to build your own you cannot protect your own until you have industry that works you cannot protect your own i don't think kenyans would have a problem being taxed 50 percent if they could see that this is a result of their tax yes that because of the tax that we see we have flawless streets that you turn on any tap in the country and water is running out of it that you can send your children to school and they will not have a problem accessing an education with or without covid that you walk into any health facility today you find medicine you find a clinical officer you find a nurse you find a doctor you get health care tax kenyans 50 percent. i don't think they'd have a problem with that if they saw that there was then something coming out of it uh -huh. but the truth of the matter is that today the majority of Kenyans who walk into a shop, supermarket, whatever, are not able to buy bulk for their buck. There is, you, you, and it is getting worse and worse. Before you know it, the 14th of February will come along. We don't know what you're going to face. You don't know if the shilling you have, actually you do know, you know that the shilling that you have <laughs> is not enough for you to feed your family, for you mm. to feed yourself, for you to do the very things that a government is supposed to ring fence for you. It cannot happen today. So now mm -hmm. that hope that you speak of is yes. what is in the mouth of many a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. It is not enough. It is getting worse by the day. People have to be creative to survive. It should not be. It doesn't matter if it's the proverbial 100 days, 100 years, mm -hmm. whatever. I, I think, I think uh, it is on the owners of government and specifically the CS, the CS for me, that is uh, Moses Kuria, in terms of investment and industrialization. I've given a story and I'll give it here. Uh, Dagote from Nigeria came to Kenya the other day and went and saw the president and he wanted to invest in uh, cement production mm. in this republic. 
but uh, after months and months of looking into the possibility of investing, he then came back and said that that investment in Kenya was not viable because one, our power regime is uh, meant to place the uh, industrial man who wants to come and produce it. Mm. Our ease of doing business is not conducive for him to be able to do business. So Dagote moves to Ethiopia and went and invests his money there and start uh, doing Dagote cement. Today, Dagote cement is in our shelves in this country and it is still cheaper than cement that is produced in this republic. That tells you there is something wrong. I've seen companies like Farmer's Choice move from Limuru. Mm. I've seen companies like Butter Bullet that is based in my place. Limuru is moving to, I think, uh, Botswana or somewhere. Because they cannot be able to sustain the cost of production in this country. And I think that is something that this government, if we want to widen the tax net, mm. we will only widen it by allowing investors to come to, to, the, come country, to the country, not to increase the tax that we tax that common hassle that we talk about. So mm. I think for me that this government has its work cut out for them. It, let, let, because let me tell you, if anybody continues to advise the government to increase tax that is supposed to be paid by the common man it is going to alienate this government and that is something that must be addressed we must look at today if you land at kigari international airport in rwanda you can leave that airport with a business permit because they have made the ease of doing business in their country well you will go apply if you require legal services, they are provided for in that uh, airport. If you require a certificate of all the registration requirement, provided you have come with the right document, you will leave that airport and get to the city of Kigali with a registered business entity that has a bank account of your choice. Mm. Now, this country, we must do that. We have a lot of idle land there. Out, and we must get there. I mean... But that was the promise, Gerard, uh, but, 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 but let me But let me ask you, mm. is it not funny that this country in the sub-Saharan Africa is sitting in one of the biggest water reservoirs that is in Trokana. Mm. But surprisingly, one of the counties that we are giving a lot of uh, lily food mm. is Trokana. This country <laughs> is sitting in a lot of reserve for a lot of mining that government has not exploited. Uh, they need to invite, because these are investors that come to do these things. Mm. And if you cannot create ease of doing business for investment, then taxing Kenyans some more will only alienate this government. And Father I must and say this, from whatever. having been one of the people that uh, w w were in favor of this government, mm. that we must sit down, look at our tax regime, are we pressing a Kenyan who is already pressed some more? Mm. Because let me tell you, the uprisings that you have seen in the world, mm. they are not brought by government honest uh, officials of government stealing money. They are brought by taxing people without seeing results. She has said that very well. It's Go true. to Switzerland. They pay more than 50% of, of, of the earning, more than 50% of the earning is paid as tax to government. In fact, their prime ministership is, uh, it, 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 it is rotating. Presidency. Uh, the presidency is rotating. Why? Because these guys, when they pay their money, they get health services, they get education, they get good roads, they get uh, ease of doing business. They have no problem uh, of paying their tax because they can see results. But now, Ask a Kenyans to pay some more on that hunger or on that fuel. And he is still struggling to take his kids to school. The only result you will get is an angry Kenyan. It's people who get dissatisfied. Gerard, so come in now because um, the hustler is, uh, was being promised that the bigger thing that is going to happen to a hustler is we're going to make it easier for you to do business. We're going to make it easier for you to earn a living. We're going to facilitate you so that you can earn a living. And then, of course, immediately the president said is when you come in there, you will be able to then contribute more to the well-being of the country. Mm -hmm. But the conversation has moved more and more from we are facilitating to you will pay taxes. 
Sasa the latest now is the president is being nicknamed Nabi Lazaro mtoza ushuru. Zakayo. Zakayo mtoza mtoza ushuru. What's a mismatch here? Why why would the president deviate so much from the original messaging? I think uh, first of all I think also being we are being very hard on uh, William Ruto's mm -hmm. administration. It's barely 150 days. Barely. Barely. Mm. Yes. I'm sure even most of us here have not even dwarmed this year <laughs> since the elections ended. <laughs> There's only much we've been able to do within that. There is a there is a to not dwarm na nini bwana hata tuwezi afford. What did this not even for the one to cool. So I think we are so I think we are being a bit hard on them. When it comes to the issues of cost of living majorly it revolves with in Kenya it revolves around food. You talk about cost of living talk about hunger talk about sugar talk about it's it's the the consistent i mean the the consistent the 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 food the basic food that we talk about mm, so when you look subsidize when you look at food we talk about subsidizing production mm. that's what william ruta said he said he's not going to subsidize consumption and that is probably why we're still having the prices high mm. as i are there the cost of living is still and he said i'm not going to subsidize consumption and subsidize production mm. so as we are speaking there's an activity that's going on on subsidized fertilizer that they're distributing across the country i think those are some of the things that media are not looking at because those are positive activities uh so we expect that we're going to have better harvest this year and maybe we can have we can have some level of stability in terms of food prices mm -hmm. uh and uh, also this in the in the next in a few days they're talking about bringing in duty-free grains maize and uh, and rice uh, talking about it's it's already the process already in this country when things are like that are talked about it's, it's, already. it's already happened no no it's not happening <laughs> the minister of agriculture if and you can go and counter check the minister of agriculture for the last almost 30 days i've been working on a framework to to get companies to import grains duty free maize at around 920,000 metric tons and rice you don't have to hold you right there are you telling me that the maize that was produced in the north rift and maize producing areas in this country have all been taken up so that we need it's, more importation. It's, 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 it's it's Are we saying that the rice we have in Mwea mm -hmm. has all been taken up, so we now need to import <laughs> more rice? Is that what we're I'll, saying? I'll, I'll challenge you to that, City Morgan. Uh, if you can have your stats right, then I'll be very ready to consume those numbers. As it is right now, the grain, the, the grain, the grain, the grain reserves are very low. Talk to millers. Call up any miller and ask them how easy it is to get maize to go and about to the mill. Farmer, not, not, not the miller. Yes, the maize farmers have already for the last months because mo most in, in North Rift we harvest uh, from October. We have the maize from October. But it's so also October now you so that he can note that. Uh, yes. And this is why I come from North Rift and I'll tell you this. If there's any farmer that is holding up maize, then they're doing it probably for prospects, for price prospects. But the market as it is, the grain reserves are very low. Ask anybody who's dealing, who is milling maize. So they're talking about bringing in more grains so that it can able is able to stabilize the market if the millers can can, can mill cheaply because there's uh, the because the raw materials are cheap then you can ensure that we have cheaper hunger as it is right now millers are getting maize at almost 5200 4200 per bag it is expected maybe to come down to almost 4000 as uh, if we have more grains coming into the country so hopefully that will stabilize but uh not also to not also to throw off the concern of the cost of living and the taxes that you're speaking about and that is a rider for william ruta the same as last that made him president are the same muscles that could actually dethrone him very easy that's fact number one fact number two most of kenyans are not paying taxes that's the reality mm. filing zero it's part of the game mm. when i got to a zero file zero most kenyans over 70 percent are filing zero mm. to run this country is either we do two things either you're getting loans or you're taxing people mm -hmm. So when you get the the government get uh, we've been running on loans for the longest time and you are saying now we need to run away from loans and see if we can ensure that we can build local capacity. So we have to make a choice. Last year when you're having discussions in the media, you're talking about the high cost of loans and the loan burden that the country is having. Now we are saying let's take a small break from that. Let's try and create our own local capacity in terms of tax collection. How do you ensure that almost every Kenyan who is earning is able to pay taxes? If you are not earning, of course you cannot pay. But if you are earning, you can be able to pay taxes. You're talking about companies that are running away from taxes. They are evading tax. So we need, first of all, to get that discussion and get and be very honest. In other countries, tax is a very serious matter. Go to the US and refuse to pay taxes. You'll mm -hmm. see. They'll come for you in the house and they'll kick you out. But in Kenya, you can file zero return and sleep very well. And you know you have money in the house. We've been earning money. So we need to get to a point where we have personal responsibility in terms of ensuring that you can build. The, it's, it's, it's an issue of patriotism as well. Pay your taxes. So let's ensure that everybody comes into the tax net, pays their taxes. As long as you're earning money, lepa ushuru. Mm -hmm. If you're not earning money, then it is fine. But we, we must ensure that we pay taxes. But also, as you're talking about paying taxes also, we need to ensure that we can have more Kenyans earning. The reality right now is that the biggest percentage of Kenyans are not working. 
over sixty percent of Kenyans are unemployed. Barely forty percent are people who are who are, who are engaged in active in active in, in active employment. So we need also to start having a conversation as Ndua said. Let's talk about direct production. That I can wake up this morning and I can stay on to manufacture something, and the government facilitates me and give, gives me a favorable environment to be able to thrive on that sector. As we are speaking now, Kenya, as it is, is the worst place to set up any manufacturing industry or to do it. It's the worst. <laughs> on place. Earth. It's the last place you think about. Mm. I've not gone everywhere in there on earth, but I can, from the places I've seen, I can tell you it's the worst. And we have to be competitive. Look at the region as it is. Travel to Tanzania, go to Tanzania. Many international companies are setting up. Look at Ethiopia with these punitive rules in terms of uh, in terms of capital. Mm. You take money there to get money <coughs> out of that place will, will is rhythm, it's reggae. It's another issue. But people are going there because the investing the investing uh, the investing environment is so favorable. Samsung, mm. Samsung moved out of this country, set up in, in Ethiopia. Ethiopia. They are wrecking money. Look at shoes that are being manufactured in Ethiopia. A lot of shoes and, 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 and textile. So we need to start having a conversation around also ensuring that even as we are spinning Kenyans and saying we want to get money from you, we must ensure that these people also have money in their pockets. And this was the clarion call in this campaign. Mm. Putting money in your pockets. So now you want to ensure that in this time, they are saying they are planning. They have them plan, but not very soon. As you're seeing, Raila Odinga is already in, and as you're all of us, William Maliko Amanda now, if he's not very careful, then we'll have a problem. So let's have a conversation around produ production and ensuring that every single Kenyan has money in their pockets. So why the question is, mm -hmm. these are all politicians. Mm -hmm. This same, same politician who was able to capture the imagination of the people and tell them it's all about the hustler and making the hustler, facilitating the hustler, where would, in 140 days, that same same politician sort of <coughs> drop that message in. but but you see the, the, the truth because also, the conversation uh, now uh, is not about you know how i'm going to facilitate you okay there's 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 a hustler fun and all but it's 500 500 bob to a thousand and three hundred it's not about how i'm going to facilitate you it's not about how i'm going to facilitate you to be to run your hustle it's about you will pay tax you will pay tax you will pay tax you will pay tax you will pay, pay tax and wait for a year before the price of unga comes and down we will remove subsidy mm -hmm. and we have removed subsidy uh, <laughs> I, I think I, I think also why why is such a dr drastic change in messaging? I think in, in all honesty, uh, we we must also accept that there's only there's only much magic you can do when it comes to running a nation. In the words of Rigi G, mm. we narrated that dilapidated economy. <laughs> That's the words of Rigi G. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's the reality that for the past almost eight years that we post Kibaki. We've been talking about debt and the debt burden in this country. It has been always about getting money out of this country. Yeah. Now, what if we say, well... Uh, General, do you really want to walk into that? Let me, yes, let yes, me yes. escort you walking into that, Gerald. Because <laughs> if you're Let's able to together. look at it right now, and you can, you can, in hindsight, in 2023, say, actually, you know, it's been happening for eight years. Guess what? You felt the effect of it. And the president today was in government during these eight years that we are speaking of. So they knew, and that is directly linked to the question Eric is ask, asking. Why would you make a promise knowing full well the state of things? You told people that you were going to do a certain thing knowing the factors that were present in the country to date. You cannot, you just used the word magic. So what magic did you really think you were going to he do? Loved, he loved at. There was I a political, mean, there was a political, complete com political lie that yeah. was passed by the handshake government in the name of a hundred bob subs unga subsidy. subsidy. It was a it lie. It never happened. William Ruto himself laughed it off and said, "Mimi ni kweka biblia chini." Those Unga were the itashuka. words he used. Unga itashuka. <laughs> so what magic, what <laughs> magic was going to happen do. taking all these elements into consideration? Uh -huh. So you cannot then come and say, actually, you know what? They inherited a dilapidated economy. Did they not know that the economy no, no, was but, dilapidated before but, they came into but government? But uh, you don't need mag magic to run a government. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you need. You need, hey. you need pragmatism. Uh -huh. I mean, and this story of a dilapidated government, mm. taxes are paid by the second, by the minute, on a daily basis. And then what does the government do? It expends it. It eats it. Yes, it, 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 it's, it's, you bring it, <laughs> it is used. Mm. It, you bring it, it is used. 
Now, from the time this government came in, are we saying they have not been collecting taxes? They have. They have. You'd rather even have said, guys, yes. going into this thing, you know what have endured you more to people? Going in and saying, actually, you know what, guys, we're going into something and things are thick. <laughs> I would have liked to see that. <laughs> but, but, but the but, truth but, of the matter is that you don't get the vote uh -huh. made on tales of woe. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get the vote made on promises whether you know or you do not know that you cannot keep them and that is the truth so, so let's not mm -hmm. let's not try and window dress things and say well it's, actually it's you know it's, not, it's because it's not of what we got no I, I think sometimes also we we become very unrealistic uh -huh. mm. what would you rather have done do if if you are the president today mm. What would you have done? The okay. truth. To make Unga. To the make truth, Unga Gerald. Mm -hmm. And that what is one thing that has it has escaped. <laughs> it has escaped governments. The truth. <laughs> Tell your people the truth. Don't come and stand tomorrow and say, actually, you know what? The reason why we can't do what is because of who did what before. No. This is the truth, folks. This is what is happening. This is what we can or cannot do. Hang on and let's see how we can work through this thing. And demonstrate. The truth. Yes. Yes. Demonstrated the by truth. F so, so, in fact so, so saying the in the next financial year, I'm even going to spend less. Come on. Don't come and say in the next financial year I want to spend four hundred billion shillings more. more. Come on. And then you're, you're telling us it's gonna be a tough year. Ah. How is it gonna be a tough year if you're spending you're more? Spending the money. You, then you, you people all okay. carry yourselves to Mombasa and you spend I don't know how long, how much in the same week by the way it did not it was not three days difference in the same week when you told people guys okay guys belt tighten i don't even know how many holes are left on this in this belt we're gonna tighten things a little bit. but then you go to Mombasa, people decide that the ksg can go suck a lemon we are not uh, attending this training of yours this induction of yours meanwhile we're gonna sign the register and we are going to go on holiday then we come back tomorrow stop uh, it uh, don't forget the Tell allowance the that you get truth. for signing that particular the reason why they signed the register is so they could get allowance i beg sits Pres uh, Deputy President comes and says, actually, you know what? <laughs> We've not been able to agree. They want more money. We don't have. You don't even have a hold on things. Tell the truth. And that's take what I'm saying. Take minute made. People take minute made. So, so it's a time for that minute made. <laughs> minute, made. <laughs> minute made break. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Gerard Bitok and Peter Mushandu, political commentators, are here with us in the studio. We're talking about the state of the nation politically. Yes, um... The conversation now has shifted into whether the election was legitimately won or not. We're back into that conversation. Uh, when the Raila Odinga is speaking in Jakaranda, wherever the president is, everybody who's speaking before the president is responding to Raila. I think, gentlemen and lady, mm -hmm. that these two gentlemen are working together. The handshake is actually at play. <laughs> I, I, what we are seeing here uh, is the handshake at play. Remember before... The first time Raila said he went to, to, to Kamukunji. He was supposed to have gone to Jakaranda. Then something happened and they were all very busy and they were not available. Mm -hmm. And then soon after we had the conversation, I mean the memo coming from the president to the speakers of the two houses of parliament, create this position, this and the other. Now there's a whole conversation about re rejigging the IEBC and everybody knows it. But you see, our attention has moved from all those things we are discussing today. Cost of living. Nation is trying to put it as a headline. It will not be picked up anywhere. Yeah. Last week, it was a similar headline again on mm -hmm. the cost of living. Mm -hmm. Nobody is biting these headlines. They are biting it's, Jakaranda. It's the Jakaranda that's <coughs> biting. And what is happening is that the government is actually... We are coming into February. City, do you know when the new revamped Hustler Fund for SMEs is going to be launched? Do you know the date? I have absolutely no idea. Do you know the date, Ndu? Do you know the date, Peter? <laughs> Gerard, you're an insider. Do you know the date? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> uh, if it walks like a duck, uh, if it quacks, quacks like, like a duck, duck, if it waddles uh, like a no, duck, no, you, you, you know, know you know, there was a previous <laughs> pressure. Yeah. Have you seen any, any gazette notice with my name on it? Uh, None baby. yet. None no, yet. Have you? Have you? CIA Maybe. He can be. Come here. He, he, he could come also, here. Go Buto there. could also have the same job <laughs> description as Dennis Itumbi. He said, come here. Go there. Come here. Go uh, there. Uh, <laughs> CIA operatives don't walk around with CIA. And but but, but, but listen, just, just yes. to finish my thought. Yes. <laughs> The whole conversation about the revamped Hustler Fund uh -huh. is nowhere. I mean, in terms of pressure from the people, nothing. In it's terms more. of uh, cost of living, this is was rising. Before this, whenever the president went, he had to address what the government is doing today. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ministers had the pressure to say we are importing maize, we are not importing maize. We are uh -huh. we buying maize from farmers, we are not buying maize from farmers. Real this is what conversations that were there. Yes. Now, it has moved. It is responding uh -huh. to Raila. When you look at the people who are speaking in Narok yesterday, 
all of them was yeah, standing up and saying, it's Raila, it's Raila, it's Raila, it's Raila, it's Raila. We have been diverted, all of us. And These two them. gentlemen, yeah. William Ruto and Raila Odinga, have already had a handshake. For me, first of all, I'll be very disappointed. Mm. So disappointed if, uh, if William Ruto gave uh, Raila Odinga another, another handshake well. again. I'll be disappointed because then he'll also have fooled us. <laughs> he's told us several times that he's not going to give this <laughs> handshake. Yeah. He had an issue with the handshake that uh, Raila Odinga had with Uru Kenyatta. So if he makes that turn, then he's, he just, uh, just becomes another political con man. I'll be very disappointed myself personally. Mm. And I'll stop, I'll quit politics, I'll go open a church somewhere in a corner, church. and I become a pastor. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I become a pastor. Mm -hmm. I will support And you think there's less politics in the church? And you'll invite him to uh, come to the I church. I want to start politics on this. In church, you can divide and rule. <laughs> Unless I'll be eating, I'll be eating something. You, know, you, you need to find a way to eat government money. Yeah. Whichever way it is. You have to open a church, at least you'll pick it up from there. Yeah. So I'll be very disappointed. Mm. Secondly, what you're saying about the possibility of an Anachek and these guys working, put, uh, working together. Politicians are animals from the same fold. Mm. I mean, and you never know what they're saying. If I told you that the issues of the Anshek, the Uru and Uru Kenyatta's and Raila Odinga's Anshek came in way earlier, even before the elections were repeated. Mm. That thing had been discussed Kitambo, but then Raila Odinga was saying he's not going to participate in those elections. That thing had gone. It was gone at that point. That time we are fighting, we were saying, no, Akuna Machozi Monday, Pigeni Tiagas. Those guys already had those discussions running. Ask yourself, why in God's heart? When Ray Loding was swearing himself in at Uru Park, there was no police. Mm. Police came in the morning, then they disappeared. Then Ray Loding had fun, swore himself in. They had uh, some they had a good party. When a bash, what kind of When a sitting government was there, Uru Kenyatta was saying he was not going to entertain anarchy. Mm. So if you think or if you feel there could be such undertones in terms of Antrek and getting this guy in, I would not be very surprised, honestly. Politicians, what they talk at night, mm. and whatever it is. I sit in spaces. Sometimes you go, you go to those places where politicians sit. I don't care. I live on my to live my son up. I can't go there. Next week, but that one. So I will not be surprised. But then again, what is the opportunity cost? Who pays the price for this politics? Bad we. politics. The people. Yep. You think about this. We are no longer discussing government policies and holding the government accountable exactly. to its promises. We are talking about we are in another campaign season. Exactly. Political season, you're throwing Absolutely. in words on the arguing and, and all these things. And this is where I actually disagree with the government. What business do you have responding to Ray Lodinga? Do your work. You know, You've been given government for thing. heaven's sake. I have sake. an issue. <laughs> you know, I mean, let me let me you know uh, let's focus. Uh, one of the mm. things that I have always insisted and I'll say. Mm. Every time you hear the word government of national unity or handshake, it has never, and it will never be in the interest of Wanjiko. Mm. It will always be in the interest of the politicians that are there involved in. And I think for me, it is very unfortunate, as you have put it, that now the, all the other tones that are being discussed, too unfortunate, all of us here are discussing the same thing. Mm. Raira Odinga and William Ruto. Mm. I mean... We settled this thing at uh, August 2022, and somebody met the threshold provided for in the Constitution. You have all the business to deliver to people. If you stand <laughs> as a politician uh, that is uh, inclined to William Ruto's uh, position, I think the best you will do is to sell the narrative of hope and what the government is doing, mm. not to tell us what you will do with Raila Odinga. <laughs> I mean... Three successful presidents have been dealing with Raila Odinga, from the President Moi to President Kibake to Uhuru who has gone. I mean, this is a very old narrative. I'll say this as someone who unequivocally supported this government, mm. of Kenya Kwanzaa government. Mm. It is time we stopped the nonsense of parading the issues of Raila Odinga as if they are the ones that are affecting Kenyans. Raila Odinga does not stop government from going to look for investors to come and invest in this republic. Mm -hmm. Neither does he stop government from reviewing our tax regime to see whether we can be able to salvage Kenyans from uh, being squeezed everything they have until they have nothing. Mm -hmm. The Ira Odinga does not stop this government from rearranging the budget that is realistic and that is... Uh, uh, because these 400 billion shillings we intend to increase in the budget, it is not the money that we have. And I'll tell you, if you look at the consolidated fund, where all our taxes go in, every bit of tax we pay goes to the consolidated fund. The consolidated fund is also where we derive all the payment that we pay to our debts, mm. both in principal and in, uh, in, in, in interest. Uh, interest. Mm. That's what we're deriving. Look at 
the, the responsibility of the consolidated fund in terms of meeting our external debt is concerned mm. vis-a-vis uh, the kind of amount that we are talking that is coming to consolidated fund that will tell you as much as we widen the tax net much of that money we still go to pay external debts that are not have not been beneficial to this republic and that is the truth that you have a country that is exaggerating you know i was surprised uh, be talked to pass through you move from ruaka all the way to Gitaro, the new western bypass uh -huh. and you are told that that bypass costed the kenya taxpayers money 23 billion it was a billion a kilometer and so many uh, <laughs> over a billion a kilometer it is 19 kilometers for your information mm. and the, a lot of uh feeder roads have been stolen they were not put if you move from dendero all the way to Gitaro, you will find a lot of feeder road missing some people who have prime rods have been rad rocked they cannot use their rods for commercial purposes because there are no entry no and all those and all those accesses and what have you now when a whole government spends every particular opportunity to address raira you go to open a housing scheme rather than addressing the benefits therein of having that scheme you are talking about raira odinga mm. you go to open a data you are celebrating uh data privacy, day, privacy day rather than talking about how we will continue protecting the data of kenyans in the era of these new technologies right out you go to a <laughs> prayer day rather than talking about how god has been able to get us to this right <laughs> out we must stop this it's and i'm saying <laughs> it has to stop and we must now start addressing the real issues the real elephant in the house is why are we overtaxing Kenyan who mm. does not have a job? And I think, you know what, in, in sometimes when you're trying to find the conversation that you ought to have, you need to then make sure that every essentially missile that is brought your way to divert atten attention has to then be sent in the right direction. What should we be doing today? Mm. What conversations ought we to be shaping? Because it's tomfoolery, all of this. When you're talking about this, that really doesn't matter. Today... I, I mean, because sometimes point the direction in what is happening today. Mm. There's still drought in 23 counties in Kenya. Yep. Today. Yeah. Today, children are going to school for which facilities are not adequate for them to go. Today, literally today, the, 20, the 30th of January, grade sevens are going to school in primary schools where facilities are not adequate. Not, today, ad not adequate. They are non-existent. They They're they not labs they in don't primary exist. schools. Today, people in Kenya are saying you know what okay thank you very much we don't even need a doctor in medical facilities you know what we want somebody who can look at me and tell me this is the ailment that you're suffering from and then let me look at that shelf and there will be medicine on that shelf that i can buy they don't even want a doctor they just want somebody who looks like they have some kind of medical knowledge and mm -hmm. that there's medicine on the shelf that they can actually purchase that is the kenya we're talking about today but here we are talking about oh and there's a government in place that's supposed to do these things and you're talking about the previous government who did or did not do what? Why are you focusing on that instead of focusing on the thing that needs to be done today? And that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Take that missile of misinformation and diversionary tactics and point it in the direction of which things ought to be happening today. Why are we talking about taxes? From 1960, we've been talking about taxes. We're now in 2023, we're talking about taxes. When Kenya could have been manufacturing. When Kenya could have been manufacturing today, where industry and protectionism could have been conversations that could be had in Kenya today. We are talking about this nonsense politics as opposed to building the nation. And then we're fueling the conversation. No, man. In, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of the things. 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 The whole do is very tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, I, but I think something something must must give. Something because has to give, I have a friend of mine who is a very serious plastic producer here in the industrial area. Mm. And uh, I, I induced him induced him to come to my place in Deya Limuru and purchase land because it is relatively cheaper mm. so that he can expand. So he comes, purchases like 40 acres of land mm -hmm. so that he can come and expand his plastic companies, five of them. Mm -hmm. 
and then for you to be able to power five uh, companies, you need uh, uh, power to a tune of 66 kV. Mm -hmm. So you go, you apply, you do a, a quotation in Kenya Power, and they tell you, for us to bring power 11 kilometers from where that 66 kV is, mm. you got to pay 58 million shillings. What? Yes. 66 kV. How do they work these 58 million shillings? Uh, the, you know, there is a lot of libet charges mm -hmm. that... <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, some of the things that I feel that if government does not address, we will not get where we want to be. Mm. And I keep saying about power regime because it is one of the reasons that manufacturers are hearing these nations and they are running. Mm. 58 million, you are paying to bring 66 kV line 11 kilometers away from your where the, the nini. Mm. Then when you bring, you are expected as a company to build your own substation because the uh, uh, step down, stepping down 66 kV to be able to produce in a company, mm. you have to have your own uh, substation. Step da, substation to step down power. Mm. That substation as an individual is going to cost you 40 million shillings you're to at, do. You're at 100 million here. No. Imagine. Tell me this with all honesty and fairness. And this is only power. Yes, yeah. this, with all honesty and fairness. And the government let will not give you, you any Let me tell you, let me no. tell you, you tell me whether a manufacturer will do manufacturing in the country. Mm. You come, you buy land, probably seven, eight million per acre. Mm. You're doing 40, 40 uh, acres because you want to have where you separate the plastics and all those things and whatever. You spend like, uh, you're spending, buying that land, you're spending like 150 million. The government asks you to pay 4% stamp duty. <laughs> you go, you start a process called uh, the process to actually change change of use change of user. from agricultural, agricultural to manufacturing mm -hmm. to it is costing you money mm -hmm. you want to build a company that is big you have to go through a process in a land that this they call amalgamation mm -hmm. where you have to join the titles before you actually elect the structures mm. because you have to join and make one title that has a cost costs you money mm. you have to go to the county and apply for structure architectural approval yeah. huh. takes time has money you are paying millions mm. once you are done with structural approval you have an architecture or you have now go to the county engineer and apply for structural approval yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have you have national environmental management uh, uh, called, you have to do public participation with people mm. it costs you money for NEMA certification you have to have uh, retain a structural engineer an architectural engineer and all in these that, things you have not started all these things You've you have started. you have not started we are not talking you have not started mm. you then eventually have to get what is called a construction permit from the county government mm -hmm. to be able to put up that company mm -hmm. and when you do the company the uh, kenya revenue authority will have to come and audit everything that you have spent <laughs> and you have to again pay <laughs> 11 you on the same money you have not even put up a structure mm -hmm. not single uh, <laughs> not single structure or a single <laughs> stone in that company what? and you have paid government almost have a billion shillings now you ask what? yourself, uh, Eric, eh, how are we going to cushion a manufacturer to be able to come? This is what I think. It is your responsibility, Eric, if you have the company to build your own substation. Yeah. But it is the responsibility of government to ever rebate charges Completely. on you. Bring the power to your door. Yeah. They start charging you for spending it. Yep. Today, they are charging you. When you look at that quotation, they are charging you for that transformer that you are importing. They will tell you that transformer for 66 kV is uh, 24 that, that, million. That, mm. If I go to India or I go to China or I go to Belgium and I import my own transformer, it will cost me 10 million. But when I come to Kenya, they will charge me the income tax on and the same excise, amount for that. They discourage me from importing some of my own. So this is what I think. That the conversation, and I say as uh, we talk, I would be very disappointed if there was a conversation between the president and the leader of opposition the writing I'll... peter mushendo <laughs> mene mene <laughs> teke <laughs> what's the other one <laughs> habal, habal, <sin. laughs> that's it it's on the wall my friend so so <laughs> that is the conversation that we need to have <clears throat> we need today we need <clears throat> to be speaking to the cs 
of industrialization and investment on how are we going to caution manufacturers to be able to manufacture in this country because i have sat with that uh, guy uh. and he is telling me mushendo and has already he has made, invested in buying the land. Made, yeah, in fact, he is of the opinion, Mojendo, because now this land we bought has appreciated a little let's bit. Let's sell it. Let's sell it and uh, let's move. I'm on Banda Managua. This is the truth. This is the truth. <laughs> and you see, we are talking someone who is going to import about 4,000 jobs to village people there who do not have jobs. Mm. They will now start earning something out of it. Yeah. We are talking about he is a Muhindi. He believes in uh, in their faith. They believe that they don't just need to feed the people. Mm. They also need to feed animals. Mm. So he has also purchased another piece of uh, technical piece of land where he has uh, drilled water and uh, put up here to give hey, to. Hey, uh, so now you know, uh, and this is the person. You get tax incentives from government. This is it to allow those things to <laughs> happen. That is the conversation this country must have. But, we but must not talk uh -huh. about Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga. <laughs> I'm sorry. Raila Odinga, I was talking to about him when I was in class 8 in 1997. And now here you are. And I'm here. I've finished. <laughs> I am, talking about I you are am advising, a advice, advice investors. I'm, speaking, I'm still speaking about... I mean, we need to be ashamed as a country <laughs> that we are talking about a political contest that was settled last year. We must start speaking about matters that concern Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Today... I am walking. Give this message yes. to, 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 to our friend Gerard because mm -hmm. he does not work for government mm -hmm. but he meets with these people. He hobnobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they hang around. They, they hang, hang, they hang out together. <laughs> so, Gerard. <laughs> so, so, in, in, about, in about a minute as we conclude the conversation, Gerard, yeah. Yeah, what message is that the people in government needs to hear? As you are hearing, as you're hearing from even people all over. I think for me, the message will be, and uh, I've been very consistent with this, mm. that we need to start working. The campaigns are over. We had an election that was settled. And uh, it's a business of the bereaved to cry. Yeah, you cannot be crying with the bereaved. The opposition has a right to cry and mm. talk about all those things. Let them cry. Watch opposition They accept that election was over, but you cannot have, we cannot also as a government, or the government cannot, I cannot say we, the government cannot, cannot enjoy itself in that morning and, 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 and crying. We have better issues to deal with. And uh, I think also when it comes to conversations, I think every, every, every sector of this country has failed in terms of shaping the conversations. I'm applying the media as one of our media house. Mm. House, Even the media has failed. When you look at the newspapers, it's always the political news and the things that sell. Mm. I think as a country, we've not gotten to a point, even the, some of us who are shaping conversations, to get a point where we say, let's start talking about the issues. Let's all the government accountable. Let's also hold the opposition accountable. This, we are all living in this country. The opposition and the government are members of this country and they want to inch what and why we do near. Mm. Kenya Moja. So we need to get to a point where we're holding everybody responsible. If it's Raila Odinga, we, need, we should be asking him why when the state of the economy is as it is, when people are jobless and they cannot consume, you have to have to go and take a thousand people, thousands of people in one place and tell, sell them narratives, political narratives. And for government, at the point that you've, we've given you power, you asked for votes, we gave you. You had a plan. We need to see that plan rolling out. The ministries, why do you have a minister going out to speak with political messages when mm -hmm. you should be telling us about what you're doing as a ministry? We need to get the Ministry of Industrialization. What are you doing? Ministry of Energy. Why are we having energy rights? Explain to us. Why are you having X and all that? What are you doing about it? Ministry of Agriculture, what are, you, what are you doing to ensure that the farmer can produce cheaply and we can have food next year? You want those stories. You don't want stories, political things, rooftop. We don't want to see people on rooftop of vehicles. You're Kazi Elisha. You're Elisha. Yeah. We want to see you in offices. We want to see what you're telling us about the plans that you have. I'm very consistent in that. Mm. And as a Kenyan, who also pays taxes, and I also, I also need to ensure that the government is giving me value. Not only for my vote, but also for being a citizen in this Very country. Good. And Very holding good. Them So that's the message. President William Ruto, wherever you are, that Do is you. a candid message. And that's, I think, that's what every other Kenyan is saying. Sense. And we need to move on. Hang over elections, the August. <laughs> in Gerard Bitoy, Peter Mushendo. Thank you very, very much, guys, for joining us. Have a lovely Monday. Yes.